This is my second time addressing the council in response to the Israeli government's assault on Gaza. The first time was January 2nd, and at that time there were 22,000 people dead, 60,000 wounded Palestinians, mostly women and children. Now I want to catch you up on what has been happening since. On April 14th, the Health Advisory Council of Jewish Voice for Peace reported that 33,686 Palestinians had been killed in Gaza. 7,000 were more likely under the rubble, and 76,309 were wounded. 14,000 of the deaths were children, and 17,000 children remain without adult accompaniment. 500,000 Palestinians who stayed in the north of Gaza face imminent death from starvation. I'm sending a link to, um, to this report to all council members. And I want to tell you some things about myself so you'll understand why I'm still here talking about this. I'm a Jewish Unitarian Universalist, one of the founders of Beverly Ceasefire, a member of Jewish Voice for Peace, and a Palestinian solidarity ally. By the way, you should note that an overwhelming majority of Democrats are sympathetic to the plight of Palestinians and calling for a ceasefire. A slightly smaller majority of independents are polling similarly. Even a majority of Republicans break this way. Many Jews under 35 no longer equate support for Israel as influencing their identity and their Judaism. They're disturbed by the history of occupation and ethnic cleansing. The legal system that is certainly not democratic, that is established an apartheid system that privileges Israeli Jews over Israeli Palestinians. And they are appalled by the genocidal assault on Gaza. As someone who is 75, I am an outlier in this demographic. My paternal grandfather was a Teddy Roosevelt Republican and member of the Toro Synagogue, the oldest in the U.S. He helped Russian Jews escape through Siberia the violence of the Bolshevik Revolution as an on-the-ground volunteer with the Hebrew Immigration Aid Society, now known as HIAS. My wife and I moved to Beverly from Pittsburgh several years after a gunman slaughtered 11 Jews at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, which also housed our prior synagogue. He claimed his hatred of Jews was because Hyas supported immigrants. My maternal grandfather was the executive director of the Jewish Agricultural Society that helped Eastern European Jews purchase farmland in New York and New Jersey something they weren't permitted to do in their former countries. From their examples and my parents' teachings, I've learned the social justice values that represent the best of Judaism. In third grade, my best friend's parents were Jewish refugees from a concentration camp, and I can still picture the tattooed numbers on their arms. When I became a bar mitzvah at 13, Leon Uris' novel, Exodus, and the blockbuster film based on it inspired Jewish pride in the establishment of Israel. The meme, a land without people for a people without land, rang out loudly. The Palestinians, who were actually the majority of the population, was essentially erased from popular history. My wife and I taught Hebrew and taught my wife taught Hebrew, and I taught at a religious school at the temple where we were members for over 20 years. We served on the board of trustees. Our children celebrated becoming the name and stuff, and were confirmed. In the 80s, I was confronted with the dark side of Israeli policies after future prime minister, Ariel Sharon, surrounded a Palestinian, surrounded Palestinian refugee camps in southern Lebanon and that enabled the Falange, a right-wing Lebanese militia, to massacre an estimated 3,000 inhabitants. That motivated, motivated me to become a member of Peace Now in America, the counterpart of the Israeli Peace Now movement, which was opposing the continued occupation, collective punishment of Palestinians through housing demolition, and ethnic cleansing of the West Bank, Israeli tactics which continue to this day. 
I will bring this to a close very shortly. I ended up becoming a member of Jewish Voice for Peace and being on the West Bank, helping Palestinian and Israeli activists establish, reestablish Palestinians in their homes in the West Hebron Hills. We were attacked by the IDF for doing so. I'm further appalled that our tax dollars that could be much better spent in our city, state, and country are going to support the genocide in Gaza and the continued occupation and apartheid. And that is really why I see this linked to Beverly. And finally, John Donne, the Protestant minister and poet, expressed it so well when he said, no man is an island. Everyone's death diminishes me, for I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never ask to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for me.